been remembering my 39th birthday recently. It was a great birthday, and it's one of those memories that I know I'll have my whole life. My family, my husband and me and our four children, had a slumber party that night. Now, my birthday is not just my birthday, it's also my husband's birthday. I was turning 39 and he was turning 40. And we just had a ball. I think we, uh, you know, had special food brought in. Um, my husband's sister had delivered to us two dozen assorted cupcakes, just every flavor you could think of. We had streamers up and music and we watched movies. Um, my husband gave me a new guitar, so I played and we sang songs till all hours and just had a blast. And then the nurse came in and gave my youngest daughter her chemo for the night. Joy comes sometimes in unexpected times and unexpected places. When my daughter had her second bout of cancer, she was three years old and there was nothing that I could do. I really, we had no control. It was all up to those around us. I'm not a doctor. We went where we were supposed to go, when we were told to go there. She took the medicines she was told to take. And it was six months in and out of the hospital, um, going about every couple of weeks. I knew I didn't have any control over the final outcome. So I thought about what I did have control about. Okay, I had control about fun. And so I decided that my job was to be the doctor of fun. And so whenever we would check in to the hospital, we brought just a cart, literally a ro giant rolling cart full of stuff with us. We had posters to put up on the wall. We had movies to watch. We usually took a big thing of fresh uh, cupcakes, which made us some of the most popular people on the floor, as you can imagine. Um, and we had a ball. <laughs> I mean, we really did. I know I'm talking about my daughter having cancer, and that part wasn't fun. There were a whole lot of nights where, after she fell asleep, I cried myself to sleep. But we also had a, a heck of a lot of fun during the time. One of my daughter's favorite things yeah, um, are tea parties. And so we would take in our little tea set and, you know, pour out our little make-believe tea and, and have little snacks with it and sit on the floor of her hospital room on a blanket and have these marvelous tea parties with um, dolls and stuffed animals and the occasional nurse that we or doctor who we could convince to join us. That was a lot of fun. Her last day of chemo happened to be Halloween. And so since we knew we were going to be in the hospital for all the days leading up to Halloween, um, we took a whole bunch of costumes. She being the youngest, we have, you know, um, costumes out the wazoo. So about three times a day, she'd change into a different costume. And, you know, if you're bald, I have to say, uh, it opens up a lot of possibilities, makes wigs a lot easier too. I'm kind of crying. Well, I am crying as I'm recording this, as these memories are coming flooding back to me. I mean, I don't mean to make light of the situation. My three-year-old daughter had cancer, her second bout of it. 
there was a lot of hard stuff in that. Part of what surrounded all of this was the knowledge that we really don't know what the happy times are until afterwards. Going through all of this, it was hard. It was. But I knew that depending on what the final outcome would be, I would look back on this in different ways. See, I'm, I'm really lucky because I get to look back on that time as being a really hard time because she survived. And so in comparison, those were the rough times. But I, I know and I knew even then that if the story were different, that I would look back on those days as being the happiest and the most precious days. So I tried not to waste any of them. You know, it's fitting that it's raining outside and it's fitting that I'm crying while I'm talking to you about joy because so often joy comes to us not in the days of sunshine, not in the days where everything's going great, but in some of those hard times. As the poet says, joy and woe are woven together fine. There are two songs that really stick out in my mind from this time. We listen to a lot of music. It seems like there was always either a movie playing or music playing in our room. And one um, was a Willie Nelson song. It's, it's not one of his most popular. You might not know it. It's called Good Times. And in the song he says, I'm not cold and I'm not wet and I'm not hungry. So classify these as good times. And I played that song a lot because, you know, we were having fun and we could classify those as good times. The other song that, oh, we would sing to her as a lullaby was actually the song that we here at the CLF open up all of our services with. It was put together by Lynn Unger using the words of the poet Rumi, come, come, whoever you are. We would sing that song to her and to ourselves because of that line, ours is no caravan of despair. We didn't want to be on a caravan of despair. We wanted to weave joy into everything that we were doing. So, a year after that birthday, my daughter was off of chemo, everything was going well, and we had to go into the hospital just for some routine stuff. It was summer, so I had all my kids with me. We did the appointment, and um, afterwards we were sitting in this little part of the hospital, eating granola bars before our trip home. And my oldest daughter started reminiscing about our time from the year earlier. She started talking about, oh, remember those times when we would spend the night and we'd watch movies and in the morning, dad would take us and we'd go across the street to Starbucks and get coffee for y'all. And they all started sharing their stories from that time, including my littlest one. And then my older daughter said, you know, we even made cancer fun. Joy comes to us <laughs> on some strange days and in some strange ways. Try to grab it any way you can. <laughs>